Ever since getting into astrophotography, I've wanted to take a picture of the ISS as it flies over, but I've never been successful. I'm going to share, I'm going to plan to do this with my go to mount and some very cheap software. So fingers crossed. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to use Stellarium to show you your mount tracking the ISS in the night sky and you can download Stellarium from stellarium.org and the second piece of software you're going to need which is the actual software which will tell your mount where to position itself uh, it's called SkyTrack and it's from a website called heavenscape.com um, it's a download, a uh, simple install and it costs $9 to register so first things first we will go into Stellarium and as I say, you don't actually need Stellarium to perform this, it's just it will be easy for you to see how your telescope will move. And I would also recommend uh, doing a practice run using this setup um, before you actually try it out in the, in the real backyard. So I'm going to go to configuration, I'm going to go to plugins, and I'm going to go to satellites and make sure that my satellite load at startup is ticked and I've got the latest satellite file for Stellarium which I have. That will basically enable the ISS to be visible in Stellarium. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure that my telescope control is loaded and I have an ASCOM virtual telescope connected. There are plenty of videos on how to do that, so I won't go through setting that up. Fairly straightforward. And what we're going to do is just move that out of the way and we're going to fire up SkyTrack which is the software that is going to control your mount to follow the ISS. There's a couple of things we need to do in here, which is the first one is the setup tab and you need to configure your site location. So you need to put in the longitude, latitude, your elevation and your UTC offset. And once you've done that, save the site. This needs to match where you are uh, and make sure your mount's at the same location for its longitude and latitude. The next thing we need to do is download something called a TLE file. This is a file which the software goes away and gets off a public website, which is the current orbital paths of uh, various satellites. And the one we need to choose is the 100 brightest ones and hit download. You'll see that I get a message saying mine hasn't downloaded because I've already got an, uh, <coughs> a recent existing one. This file lasts about 10 hours and then you have to re-download it again for the, the latest path. So if you're doing this over multiple nights, you will need to download it each time. And then uh, we will connect our mount. So we have our ASCOM chooser. So I'm using the telescope simulator for .NET. You would obviously choose your real mount and then we're gonna hit connect to mount. It's connected, I can see the RA deck alt settings up here and then lastly we go to utilities and we just need to check this dialog box here is showing you the features that it's obtained from your mount by querying it when it made an ASCOM connection and the ones that are in required i.e. can slew and can set tracking are the two that must be supported by your mount and as you can see under the capable column I've got can slew yes and can set tracking yes which are both required so we're all good Okay, so let's go to satellites. This is the current satellites that are visible from my location that it's downloaded from that TLE file. And if I just press refresh list, it will update that list to show you what's visible right now. The ISS is due in approximately 30 seconds time at 2.02. We can actually see that by going to the current and up and coming satellite passes. Again, if I say recalculate on here, I can see that there the ISS is due at 202.56. And if I click on it, we see this is either in red, which means it's not visible now, and we've got about 50 seconds to wait before it will become uh, visit, visible. Whilst we wait for that, there's a couple of parameters over here. So the leapfrog, leapfrog parameters. What I'm basically telling the software to do here is when we start tracking the ISS is to leap ahead 10 seconds of where its trajectory will be. 
the idea is that you can be have your mount slew, settle down, and hopefully you've got a few seconds before the ISS is present in the frame, and then it will repeat that until until you either stop the tracking or you lose line of sight. Pardon me. So, I've got about nine, eight seconds before the ISS is visible from my location. And there, it's gone green. That means now, uh, we should, if we were outside, we would be able to see the ISS. And the important thing is we can do start satellite tracking. This is now positioning the mount 10 seconds ahead of the ISS. So you'd obviously start your camera exposures, however you're going to do that. And if we now go find the ISS in Stellarium, what we should find if I zoom in, and I turn my field of view on for my camera, which I've also configured in Stellarium, you should see there, the virtual telescope is the mount and it's moving itself 10 seconds ahead of the ISS and the ISS is now passing through the frame and it will basically repeat this until the uh, ISS is no longer visible and it's as simple as that so I've yet to try it out in the backyard in the real night sky um, but I've done several simulation runs using this and it's worked absolutely fine each time. Um, obviously we've got to work out my camera exposure settings uh, based on my telescope and my focal length. But I'm fairly confident with this. this. This for me is the hardest part of taking an image of the ISS. I've tried it with my DSLR and a zoom lens and all I've got are some very shaky white dots. So I'm hoping this will dramatically improve that. And as I say, for $9 for this Skytrack software, I think it's an absolute bargain. It also, I mean, the Skytrack software also does a ton of other things as well. You, it will tell you about lunar and solar uh, passes of the ISS. You can also use it for some uh, planetary um, tracking. So, yep, yeah, that's about it. So just going back in here, you'll see that we've got all sorts of information that's telling us we've got seven minutes before it will lose sight and this will go red. So you can basically sit back and be taking as many pictures as you want whilst this is happening. If the ISS is moving too slow or even too fast, you could adjust the leap ahead value. Um, so hopefully you'll find that useful and uh, I look forward to seeing some pictures of the ISS. So please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I will catch you soon.